I've been using Micro Four Third cameras exclusively for about 18 months now and I was just thinking about how my M43 equipment had renewed my interest in photography and how I've been trying yet again to build my perfect outfit. I thought it might be interesting to explain my thoughts on my system and more specifically why I rate it so highly. My first thought is that Four Thirds itself would never have been invented by one of the big two, Canon or Nikon. It is all of the digital age and not handicapped or hidebound by a past in film. To the big makers there were two kinds of cameras, their consumer compacts and their proper DSLRs. You were a snapper or a serious user. Kodak and Olympus, then Olympus and Panasonic broke that mould. Olympus and Kodak with their four thirds mirrorless standard and ensuing mainly Olympus cameras, a stunning bit of original thought for companies with film camera backgrounds. And then Panasonic, by joining with Olympus and bringing their consumer orientation to bear, between them bringing about Micro Four Thirds, a truly digital system, owing little to the film past and where even the lenses are little computers in themselves. The freedom this gives designers has resulted in previously impossible, lightweight, pint-sized, high-quality digital imaging machines. Maybe they were tapping my emails, but whatever, they came up with a system I didn't know I wanted, exactly due to my preferences and needs, that was Micro Four Thirds. When I was a working professional, I had expensive commissions and important clients to serve, and I simply used the best cameras and lens systems I could buy, Hasselblad, Nikon, Leica, Mamiya in the main. But when I retired from the professional mill, I was free to use whatever equipment I wanted. I decided I would put together a minimal outfit, enough to cover everything I wanted with the least possible weight, bulk and inconvenience. I chose a Pentax K5 DSLR. The Pentax K5 had superb image quality and was nicely compact. It was then and is now a lovely camera. But I also liked cycling. And while the Pentax K5 body was compact, the zoom lenses were unavoidably big and heavy, from the 12 to 24 mm zoom to the 60 to 250 f4. The outfit I carried weighed the best part of 7 kilos, which is a fair weight on your back on a bike. I live in London, so avoid using my car when possible. I also spend a lot of time in France, in the Languedoc, where cycling is superb, but the area, with its miles of vineyards, is very hilly and hot. The K5 and lenses is a lot of weight to carry on and off the tube and train, or hump around the vineyards. I tried some of Pentax's beautiful little pancake primes, but didn't like the loss of flexibility compared to the zoom. And then, along came Micro Four Thirds. The first I bought was a Panasonic GF1 with 20mm f1.7 lens. I bought it as a carry around camera for when my Pentax outfit was not convenient. I quickly realised that for the type of photography I was now doing, the image quality of the GF1, used with care while not matching the K5, was good enough. But of course, Micro Four Thirds developed at a pace via the Panasonic GF2, GH2 and Olympus EPL3. When the GH2 arrived with decent electronic viewfinder and better sensor, I thought how convenient it would be to have my carry around camera and my main camera using the same lenses and accessories. So, with some regrets, I sold my Pentax system and bought a GH2. And then starting with its integrated system, I thought I'd gradually try to build my perfect outfit. Here's how it's gone so far. I now only have Micro Four Thirds cameras, an Olympus EPL5 as a carry around and the Panasonic GH3 as my workhorse. Here is my working outfit. I've taken time and trouble planning it with low weight and bulk constantly in mind, but never letting those considerations compromise photographic productivity. It's stowed in a low pro slingshot bag, the smallest one, the 102 AW. I like this little low pro for its snug fit, its ability to slide around the body and present the camera without the hassle of removing it, and of course for its compact size. The perfect outfit I mentioned is my GH3 with battery grip and three Panasonic lenses, the 7-14 zoom, the 12-35 f2.8 zoom and the 35-100 f2.8 zoom, and a Manfrotto mini tripod. I rarely need a zoom longer than 100mm, 200mm equivalent in full frame. But if I think I might, I pack the 100 to 300 in the top compartment, in which case there is still ample room for a mobile phone, wallet and so on. You could argue that the battery grip on the GH3 adds unnecessary weight, but it adds so much to the handleability of the GH3 that with it I consider the GH3 about the best handling camera I've ever used. And effectively it makes battery concerns a thing of the past. So performance over poundage in this case. I find the GH3's greater weight and size compared to the Olympus OMD to my predilection. 
If you prefer the Olympus, though, you have a weight and size bonus at to no disadvantage whatsoever. The 12 to 35 and 35 to 100 zooms are both a useful f2.8, of course, and the focal lengths cover the most useful range from wide to medium telephoto, with an adequate turn of speed and, important in the case of the GH3 body, built-in stabilisation. At a pinch, I could live with just these two lenses. There's no macro here, but the 12 to 35 focuses usefully closely. In fact, now I think of it, I might buy a couple of extension tubes to use with it for rough and ready macro. I do really want the 7 to 14 in the bag, though. It's a lens which can make a dull picture interesting. It opens up a wide range of viewpoints, and sometimes you just play need it to get everything in. I've done a bit of calculation to compare my Pentax and Panasonic outfits, but I think the figures for the Pentax would be in the ballpark of Nikon or Canon or other crop sensor DSLRs. A full frame DSLR and lenses would be even bulkier and more expensive, but I don't really think that MFT competes with full frame. The figures are interesting. My Pentax outfit costs a little under £3,400 for the K5 body and battery grip, 12 to 24 f4 zoom, 16 to 50 f2.8 zoom, and 35 to 135 f2.8 zoom. The Panasonic the equivalent is quite a lot more expensive. In the UK, the Panasonic comes out at about £400 more expensive than the equivalent Pentax outfit. And I imagine a similar price differential would be in place whether you're buying in America or in the Eurozone. Pentax outfit weighs in at 2.7 kilos or £6. The Panasonic at 1.6 kilos or £3.5. A saving of 1.1 kilograms or £2.5, which works out at a 60% weight saving. OK, what's remarkable about this picture? Well, once it's in focus, in this bag is my full working outfit with mobile phone, wallet and a little Manfrotto tripod. Can you see I'm just holding the whole lot aloft with my little finger, arm outstretched, holding the whole lot aloft with my little finger. Try that with any DSLR. In terms of bulk, the Micro Four Thirds gear takes up about 60% less space than the DSLR equivalent, which means a smaller, lighter bag. The weight and bulk savings are striking and highly welcome. The extra price, I'm less delighted about that, I must say. Still, maybe I'll save the money on osteopaths fees. I have a fair collection of lenses, Panasonic 7-14, 12-35, 12-42 compact, 35-100, 100-300 and 14-140 zooms, plus a 20mm f1.7 and a Sigma 105 f2.8 which I use for macro, and of course my favourite little lens, my very little favourite, the Olympus 45mm f1.8 which I don't think that anybody who has a micro four thirds camera should be without. The main thing on my wish list is that when Panasonic bring out their 150mm f2.8 they bring out a 1.4 times converter at the same time. A 210mm f4 would be fabulous, equivalent to a 400mm f4 on full frame and about as long as I ever need to go. If Panasonic do do that, or Olympus for that matter, I'd be a happy photographer. I'd sell the 1-300 to zoom to fund it, that being the least favourite of all my lenses. It's by no means a bad lens but from 7 to 100 millimeters, I have top grade image quality. And the 1 to 300 millimeter, while good value for money, is not in the same league as my other zooms. High quality lenses from 7 to 400 millimeter, all in one small bag, would be a dream come true. And the slowest of them would be f4. Brilliant. I've been singing all the praises so far, but there are some things I don't like. First among them is lens swapping. I hate to see that sensor exposed to the open air every time I change a lens. I wish some kind of blind could be devised that automatically protected it while the lens was out. Although all the cameras have sensor cleaning mechanisms, there won't be many Micro Four Thirds users out there who, if they stop the lens down to f22 and make a picture of a plain white surface, won't see a few dark patches on it at 100% on the computer screen. In the south of France, where I spend quite a lot of time, there's a lot of pollen about in the air, and that actually sticks to the sensor and requires quite a bit of effort with a cleaner to remove it. It might be handy to have the sensor's anti-aliasing filter made replaceable in some future cameras. Then that could just be swapped if there was dirt on it that you just couldn't remove. My second gripe is this. As a result of the smaller sensor, the lenses for Micro Four Third cameras are of shorter focus. A 50mm standard lens view on a full frame is achieved by a 25mm lens on MFT and so on. The shorter focal length yields more depth of field, and that's often very useful. 
but sometimes you really want to isolate your subject from the background and it is a pain then. Here's an example. I want to isolate these bottles from the messy background but my 12 to 35 mm zoom at 35 mm and f2.8 just cannot do it. A 24 to 70 mm zoom at 70 mm on full frame giving the same angle of view and open up to f2.8 would do it nicely but it's a fact of optics. The solution is wider aperture lenses, but that means primes and carrying an extra lens just for one purpose. On this occasion, I would have backed up further and used my 35 to 100 wide open at 70 millimeters. That would have smeared the background fairly well. Unfortunately, there was a wall behind me and I couldn't move back to use the longer lens. C'est la vie, nothing is perfect. One other thing is following focus on fast moving subjects, where micro four thirds are at a disadvantage to DSLRs. On the other hand, Micro Four Thirds focus is smack dab accurate and on less frantically moving subjects, effectively instantaneous. Most people, in my opinion, though, will find the Micro Four Thirds follow focus performance perfectly good for their needs. I certainly do. Now, electronic viewfinders. The electronic finder and the optical finder of the DSLR are one of the two biggest differences between the genres of cameras. I know that some people hate them, but personally, I prefer them. 100% accuracy and you get a good idea of how your picture will look rather than how the scene does. In this case for example through a DSLR all you can see is the street lamps. On the electronic viewfinder the image is far easier to see and judge and on the latest cameras there's little of the shearing effect that used to turn people off them. The other element of my perfect outfit is here, my carry around. It spends most of its life in my shoulder bag. It's the lovely little Olympus EPL5, marrying tiny size and tip-top image quality. The one thing I don't like about it is the lack of EVF. On the other hand, the accessory EVFs are big, ugly, vulnerable things which defeat the purpose of the small carry-around body in some ways. The answer? A cheap Hong Kong-made £35 optical finder I found on eBay. It covers the angle of view of the 20mm f1.7 nicely and with my eBay lens hood is the nearest thing to the style of one of my old Leica M film cameras. I use the finder mainly to make sure I'm aiming the camera in the right direction more than actually accurate framing. If I want accurate framing, or to use the 14-42 to Panasonic compact zoom that matches the, the little Olympus so well, I use the swivelling monitor. But I'm not averse to the LCD finder. I, I do have an EVF for this, but I don't use it very much. I have to say, if Joe Cool was a photographer, this little EPL5 with this viewfinder and that lens hood, this would be his camera. With the finder and the 20mm Panasonic pancake lens, I put the focusing on the multi-point setting and let the camera take care of it. It certainly gets fewer fuzzies than I used to with my Leicas. It seems to sort out the area I want to focus on almost by intuition. So, summing up. I like the form of Micro Four Thirds from its inception. When the Panasonic GH2 came out, then the high speed lenses and the Olympus OMD and then the F28 zooms, function matched the form and the combination became the rolling stones of the camera world. Why the stones? Because like the stones, none of the components are particularly sensational on their own. But put them together and they really rock. So there it is, me and my little love affair with the camera system. I'm not sentimental about cameras and lenses, I regard them as white goods in essence. But there's something about these cameras and lenses that makes me enjoy using them in a way that only my Hasselblads ever have before. They are high precision tools but they have character. Whoops, now I'm getting sentimental. I'll leave you with a quick run through of the zoom range of the three lenses I carry with me. Thanks for watching.